Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Let's Play on the channel. This is Subnautica. I am super excited to drop another blind playthrough and a highly requested one at that. This is a game that has gotten mentions by a lot of you in the community for a really long time and we've been slowly making our way through the highly requested games when I've had time for them like Outer Wilds and Hollow Knight and this is one that was always kind of lingering around as well as a recommendation but I have my lovely big boss tier patrons uh, to thank for this game being selected in my most recent poll and I am looking forward to it. All I know about it is ocean and apparently scary. Um, so I think that what I can really surmise is it's some sort of, um, I believe this is a survival experience in the ocean. That's kind of all that I'm aware of jumping into this one. Um, I'm aware that it also has I think an expansion below zero that came out uh, as well. So depending on how the first playthrough goes with Sub Subnautica, we will see how below zero goes as well if we wish to uh, continue. But I, yeah, like I have, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. So it's going to be fun. Uh, and it's finally time for those that have done their 12 years of waiting uh, for me to play it. So without further ado, let's jump into Subnautica and uh, let's see what all the fuss is about. So we're going to press play and we're going to start a new game. Uh, we have choices. Okay, survival, freedom, hardcore, and creative. So we, well, here we go. We get our premise. Crash land on a dangerous alien planet, scavenge resources, and manage hunger and thirst to survive. Okay. I, I guess we should play survival. It's like Minecraft. <laughs> Except you eat. I don't, all I know is Minecraft is survival and creative, right? You can just build anything and do whatever. So apparently uh, you can just have no constraints whatsoever. But let's go for survival. I assume that's the intended way to play. So we got to eat. We got to drink. Uh, we got to maintain resources and oxygen levels. Let's do that. Cool. Okay, I didn't realize that there was going to be a space element to it as well. We crash land on an alien planet. All right. We are on a planet that is not our own. Any key? Which one's the any key? I was going to say I have the FOV turned up a little bit because I was going to be like, bruh, how can I see my own neck like that? But it makes sense. Just <laughs> I have the FOV up a little bit, so my head is actually floating above my shoulders. Maybe I'll have to adjust that. Oh, ah, right in the face. Goddamn. right into it also can i say the music is a the, the music is a banger actually as well okay how do i use this there we go put out the fire <laughs> wonderful oh the fire's coming back the music is a banger let me tell you uh the main menu theme and then we just got some cool theme going on there that's cool booting in emergency mode you <laughs> suffered minor head trauma this is considered an optimal outcome. <laughs> PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Okay, <laughs> this is the optimal outcome. Okay, hang on one second because I think what I did is I did have a look just quickly in our options and I think I adjusted the speed of the subtitles because I, I thought that it was going to type it out and I hate slow text when it like types out. So I'm going to slow this down actually um, because it also affects how long subtitles are on the screen. So I don't want that to disappear real quick. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, okay, let's have a look. We're, we're getting right into it. So we've got a PDA with a fire extinguisher. 
Um, oh God, this is going to be overwhelming at the start, isn't it? All right, let's just go to data bank like the PDA told us to and let's have a look. Oh God, okay. There's so much. Um, air pumps can be used to pipe breathable air to a remote location. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to have a look at these and then we're going to make sure that we refer back to them when they actually come up because we've just started. So it's probably good that we at least get our bearings and not just like fill our brain with uh, knowledge that we don't know what to do with yet. We have a handheld scanner, the essential science and survival tool. The scanner can be used to add new blueprints to memory and analyze unknown entities. We're going to be using that a lot. It emits electromagnetic radiation in the specified direction, which is reflected by the environment and then analyzed to determine the physical makeup of the targeted object. It has four primary functions. So blueprint acquisition records the physical parameters of scan technologies. Okay. And then they can be a constructed organism analysis. The scanner will attempt to match scanned organisms against the onboard database. If no match is found, then the species will be assigned an easy to remember name. Okay, we give it, it gives a, automatically assigns it a name, cool. And a new databank entry will be created. Your PDA's AI will also attempt to synthesize theories on behavioral tendencies and evolutionary origins where possible. That's kind of smart, where it's like, we're not gonna just act like a random Pokedex where it's like, here's this thing and you understand it immediately. But it's like, oh, we're going to like give it a name for you with AI. And then we're going to like come up with things based on what we've scanned, which is very smart. That is actually kind of cool. I like that. Um, scanning any living organism will display basic information on their state of health on the scanner's HUD. Self-scan uh, to determine their own physical well-being. We'll search for foreign bacteria and other signs of ill health and compare available data to provide a diagnosis. Cool. The Altera Spectroscope Scanner, understanding the world so you don't have to. I love that it has an Altera like, uh, you know, uh, chime when you turn it on. That's cool. Uh, we have a repair tool, which can be targeted at any common device, control panels, habitat modules, radios to stitch wires and seams back together at the atomic level. Very good technology there. They always keep one of these under the pillow. Most people don't care why it works, just that it saved their life that one time. But in case you're curious, it combines scanner and fabricated technologies to determine the proper specifications for the targeted object, then rearranges the available physical material to match their original specs. The Altera repair tool, get your fix. Nice. Okay, habitat installations. This feels like we're getting into a lot of stuff that I am not even ready for yet, but I'll have a look. Uh, we have solar panels. It's the most prevalent power source in the galaxy, uh, which makes a lot of sense. We've got the mobile vehicle bay is a deployable station equipped with fabrication drones designed to construct small research and exploration vehicles from raw materials. Sea glide is a personal transportation device for use in oceanic environments. Okay, nice. So we'd be, we're going to be needing this to traverse. Gotcha. The sea glide, anything that moves faster underwater is probably trying to eat you. Gotcha. Um, survival package, additional technical, goddamn. Uh, two birth emergency life pod. Standard features is a short range radio of 250 kilometers, 250 kilometers uninterrupted. Wall mounted fabricator, which we probably have to fix judging by these wires. Medical kit fabricator. Onboard air brake and flotation devices for land, sea, or space recovery. Solar power cells. Emergency exits. We have all environment protection suits, ready to eat nutrient blocks, drinking water, med kits, and flares. Uh, some life pods may be equipped with different supplies, such as radiation suits and replacement parts. Board the right life pod for the right situation. Hopefully we're in the right one. Uh, all environment protection suit, the Altera AEP suit, a single solution for a universe of infinite danger. You're currently wearing the AEP suit, a hermetically sealed personal environment designed to withstand the most extreme conditions in the known universe. Can I pee in it? Does it have built-in toilet? AEP suit should always be equipped before life pod launch in case of a hull breach. I like the contextual heads up display. Slimline build for maximum freedom of movement. That's good. We, we don't want to chafe the, the balls. That's good. We've got some freedom of movement. Let's have a look at the this ship. So this is apparently what we crashed on, right? The Aurora ship. Uh, Long-range capital ship. Mission. Um, 
Okay, a phase gate installation, three year operation time, a command team of 23, engineering team of 85, support crew of 40, and nine passengers. We sustained heavy damage in orbit of planet 4546B, cause unknown, of course. Engineering section, dark matter iron drive core V8, manned robotic suite, advanced scanner suite, long range communications relay, and cubic kilometer storage for phase gate apparatus. So are we going to try and find, because I'm assuming we've, we're in a life pod, so we have like escape pod from the crashing ship. we got to go find the big ship and build a phase gate. Is that our mission? Feels like our mission would probably kind of not be a priority anymore and it would just be objective survive. <laughs> Accommodation for 150 people, multiple canteens and leisure facilities, including a VR suite and virtual cinema. Let's go find this ship so we can just sit on our ass and go in a virtual cinema. Oh, <laughs> how good is start here? If you are reading this, you've survived an emergency evacuation of a capital class ship equipped with Altera technology. Congratulations, the hard part is over. Your PDO has automatically rebooted in emergency mode. This operating system has one directive, to keep you alive on a hostile alien world. If that is not possible, it will alert salvage teams to your location of your remains. It features full monitorings of vital signs, um, which I think, by the way, is going down in real time, uh, which is a concern. Um, I need to read faster or just accept the fact that I'm going to get, I think that's hunger. I'm going to get hungry. Um, we have an onboard camera, microphone, and OCR technology for short range situational analysis cross compatibility that's good personal and work files have been encrypted may be retrieved at a later date by a licensed engineer okay survival checklist minister first aid take inventory of available materials survey the environment construct necessary survival equipment check the life pod for damage broadcast local distress signal locate other survivors find a permanent habitat maintain physical and psychological health until rescue. These are our objectives. There you go. And blueprint database is corrupted. The hard drive has corrupted 80% of stored blueprints. So we've got to find stuff to reactivate it. There we go. I've read what we're going to read for now. If I need to go back to it, it's all there for us to go back to. Uh, you can also replay uh, the voice log, apparently. That's cool. Uh, we've got a beacon manager. We've got blueprints. Good, we can make bleach in case we need an easy way out. Perfect. Okay, let's close this bad boy and let's figure out where I am. I'm hungry. Can I have food, please? Is there any food in here? Haha. -ha. We got flares. We got filtered water. Filtered using all organic membrane, non-vegetarian. Uh, processed food recovered from the Aurora. Okay, um, get in my inventory. Okay, gotcha. How do I equip my scanner? Use fabricator. Um, hang on. So inventory. I only have a fire extinguisher. I'm assuming I don't have the scanner yet. I have a medical kit. Uh, I need a repair tool, which means I need to use this. Which means I need equipment. Oh god. Oh, I really like this menu system. This is actually really cool. Uh, yeah, battery and titanium. This UI is really satisfying to look at, actually. Okay, resources, electronics. Oh, God. All right, so I got to get stuff to make stuff to make other stuff to do things, and then I got to survive. All right, gotcha. So I'm assuming this stuff would be like... Um, oh, what? is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet fall. Okay. Jesus. All right. I'm assuming what I need to do is, uh, I would assume that these would be like, uh, colored in if I was able to actually make stuff. So if I could like, let's have a look repair tool. I can pin the recipe. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. How many recipes can I pin? Just every single recipe in this world. Okay, cool. Uh, let's start with these three, because that looks like that's going to be useful. Um, great. Go find things. Objective survive. I need a... Well, hang on. I need... Fucking hell. I need a battery. I need silicone rubber. I need cave sulfur. 
My god, man. Alright, uh, good luck, I suppose. Alright, I'm pinning recipes. Um, I need a repair tool first. Um, let's go this way. Oh god, I saw that. Hey guys, I found the ship! God, why did it have to be dark? Whoa! Okay, well, I found the ship. The Aurora suffered orbital hull failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. Zero human life signs detected. Okay, wonderful. All right, I might need that flashlight sooner rather than later. I thought that it would be a nice day. It is not. It's a nice night. All right, we swim into the ship. Whoa. Oh, God. This is going to be one of those situations where I'm going to hate this. Okay. Um, oh, right. I suppose I should give context to the fact that, by the way, uh, the deep ocean, yes, does indeed terrify me. So isn't that fun? Um, the fact that the mysteries of our ocean um, really kind of terrify me. We, we don't know what's going on under there, do we? You know? We're just kind of chilling out um, with uh, less than 5% of our oceans explored. Hate that. Um, but also at the same time, I, I, I like, kind of love it. I love space. I love the ocean. It's all it's all very like fun and cool, but at the same time, kind of terrifying. Um, we're going to take a little while to get our bearings and figure out what's going on here. So um, let's, let's just uh, express a little bit of patience as I get into this and we see what we need. Um, essentially, I need two batteries. Um, uh, I need two batteries, so I need some copper ore. Can I just pick up copper ore or do I need a device to like extract that? I've got enough mushrooms for two batteries. Oh, shit. Oh. It's making oh, it's making weird noises and it's farting on me. That's good. That's a defense mechanism, I suppose. Oh, oh, metal salvage. Um, goddamn. I just need to keep resurfacing because I've got limited oxygen. Um, I wonder if. Hmm. You know, this would be great if I had a scan or something. Oh, hang on. What's this? I see something. Break limestone. Is, is this how I get mine copper ore? In the limestone? How do you break that, though? hi -ya! Oh, hang on. There it is. I do be mining. Okay. Yeah, of course I'm not going to get copper, am I? Duh. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? All right. I'm just going to get really high on acid mushrooms, I think. That's the plan. I need to remember that oxygen exists. Okay. So then I've got to get supplies to build an oxygen tank. Oh, nice. I'm going to be able to see soon. Should we watch the sunrise? Look at this. Look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful ocean, by the way. There you go. All right, I can see now. This place is now significantly less scary. Beautiful. All right. Um, oh, that's nice too. The light coming through here. Um, I think it's cool that we have a distance meter from our life pod at the moment. It gives me a very good sense of direction. Oh no, actually no, sorry. It's a distance from the surface. That is different. Okay, distance from the surface. I'm looking for some copper ore, baby, so I can get some goddamn... Oh, I almost caught a fish. hey -ya! The alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. I have a bladder fish. Unique outer membrane has potential as a natural water filter. Interesting. Isn't that cool? Uh, the more you know, now I'm just holding on to this fish. 
Can I just pick up? Can I just pick them up? Just go fishing? Look at this. This is an eyeball on a fish. Hiya! Anyone got any copper? What is this? That is not copper, but that's a start. We're finding resources. So we've got a uh, we've got a fish that can be, can be used as a water filter. Now I just need a fish that can be used as a air filter, and then I'll just suck on the fish while I'm underwater. I guess. Will that work? <laughs> I'll put my mouth over the fish's mouth and then use its gills to breathe. That's a flawless uh, mentality to have there. Ooh, I have an egg. Data bank entry unlocked. Okay, we're going to need to keep that in mind. I'm just catching fish at the moment. We're just going for it. Because why not? If they're there, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to cook me up some fish later. We're just doing, <laughs> we're just, we're just up and down diving at the moment until I find some, some copper. Because I need some, uh, I need some batteries. Baby. Well, isn't this just a fun little adventure, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Salt. Yep. Gotta get, gotta get salt. I've probably gone past the copper like uh, a million times, but you know, I don't know what I'm looking for, so. Did I just drop the fish? No. I just don't have it equipped anymore. Copper <gasps> is an essential oh, you can get the copper in the limestone. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely. My inventory is full! My inventory is full! Fucking get this shit out of here! Get these mushrooms out. <gasps> I just accidentally dropped water. Without water. Oh god, I just dropped my... Thank you. Give me, give me back. Alright, I can now make two batteries. That's good. And then we can make... What is that? What can we make? We can make a scanner. But I need the repair tool. So I need cave sulfur and silicon rubber. Um... And I can, oh my god, and I can make silicon rubber with creep vine seeds. Alright, look for those. Alright, I might need to make that. Oh, you can make titanium with metal salvage. Cool. I can make enough. I can make 12 titaniums if I wanted. Cool. That's good to know. Um, I'm an expert already. Perfect. Isn't that good? Um, I need to stop picking up acid mushrooms like it's the only thing that I could ever want. Because my inventory is going to get full. Okay, look at these strange... What is this? Oh, giant coral tubes, gotcha. Oh man, it goes even deeper. Alright, well I need to hang out near some caves, I think. Creep vines? Cave sulfur. Alright, let's go find a cave so I, so I can get some cave sulfur. Goddamn laughing fish. More acid mushrooms. What is this? Nice, I got another fish. Floater. How am I doing? Am I doing good? <laughs> I'll be out here. I'll be out here surviving. Right, this looks like a cave to me. Oh shit! What the fuck are these things? I'm being laughed at and I got exploding goddamn jellyfish. What are they? What the fuck? Okay. Almost died. My god. Alright, I'm no longer confident. No longer the confident man that I was five seconds ago. 
I'm just trying to find cave sulfur, guys. Oh, you know what? Actually, you know what? You know what? I'm thirsty. Okay. Um, you know what is actually a good idea is let's build this scanner. Um, let's build this scanner. Because if we build the scanner, we can then scan for things that we need, right? That seems like a logical conclusion to draw. And then I can probably dump all these fish in a box somewhere. This is a beautiful looking game though. Sea glide fragment. Oh, okay. Can't do anything with that yet, but that is a sea glide fragment. I'm just going to have to commit that to memory, which is not going to work, is it? There's a sea glide fragment there. Remember that. Can we enter through the bottom? Because there was a... Yes. Because there was a bottom thing. Nice. Okay. Oh, that just fabricates one for us? Nice. Okay. In that case... I did take some damage, so I'm going to use... My first aid kit. Yeah. And then I'm going to get that. Cool. All right. I'm also going to drink because I need to replenish. Oh, that, that didn't even make that much. There we go. Oh, cool. There we go. We can cook the food or cure the food and also make filtered water with a bladder fish. Okay. How cool is that? All right, this is awesome. I love this. Um, let's make a battery. There's a big ass battery. New blueprint acquired. New blueprint synthesized. All right, we can also make a power cell with two batteries and silicon rubber. Let's now make the scanner. Scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. Cool. Uh, okay, now I just need I need titanium. Cool. Uh, I need another battery. Cool. Um, what is that? Oh, glass with uh, two quartz. Nice. I can do that. Can I not? Glass. Woo. I got a flashlight. Look at us go. Um, guys, I, I'm an, I'm a subnautica expert. Where's my subnautica license? We, we got it. Let's go. We're picking it up. Now I just need to find creep vines and cave sulfur. Ooh, waterproof locker, small storage solution that maintains position in the water. Oh, that's cool. So I can be like, I'm full of stuff. Good thing I got my waterproof locker here. That's nice. Uh, pipes. Oh, cool. The chain of pipes can be used to transport breathable air from a functional pump. I can now make a oxygen tank. Hmm. Continued degradation of the auroras drive core may result in a quantum detonation. Oh, you are continuing to monitor. Don't put me on a timer like that. Oh God! All right, Jesus! All right, uh, we're in trouble. I gotta, I gotta fix stuff. God, that's gonna stress me out. Let's make a oxygen tank. Let's go. More oxygen. Now we can make a high capacity one. Okay. Maybe I should make more water. Because I'm going to need to survive. And should we cook something? Let's cook. Let's cook at the Gary fish. No, Gary. It is common for those accustomed to synthetic foods to be repulsed by eating an animal carcass. Remember that humans survived this way 
for millennia. You can too. Oh, okay. So you make the floating air pump, which is what we read about, and then you connect pipes to it and you can go and get some air from a pipe chain. Okay. Gotcha. We'll figure that out later. Um, cause I have a super cool oxygen tank now. Let's drink. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Let's eat cooked Gary fish. Yum, yum, yum. Um, can I store stuff? storage container so I can be like I don't need this right now so you can go in here and then when I actually need to craft stuff that'll come in useful cool hopefully that egg doesn't hatch while it is in the container all right you get in there for now we do not have the best storage space in the world but I guess we'll figure that out let's have a look at this alien eggs Evidence suggests that a substantial number, if not all of the local species, reproduce through egg laying. Eggs can be found resting on the seafloor, buried beneath detritus, detritus, or even wedged into cracks in the rock. Different species likely favor different biomes as their nesting grounds. Eggs discovered in the wild are in some form of natural stasis, likely awaiting ideal conditions in which to hatch or the delivery of some vital enzyme which will kickstart the process. It is impossible to calculate the species of the egg from the exterior, however it may be possible to stimulate a hatching response if an egg is relocated to a suitable alien containment unit. Okay, so we have an advanced theory now, cool. Um, I think what I'm going to do is there is an option, I believe, in accessibility to have a PDA pause, I did notice this, and because everything goes down in real time and I'm a big reader, and we're doing a lot of reading on the databank stuff. Um, I might mix it up a little bit. We'll see how we go. If I need to do some reading, I might pause it and then I'll just keep it like normal for now. All right. Um, I can quick bind things. There we go. Okay. I now have a scanner. How do I use it? Self scan. Self scan complete. Vital signs normal. Okay. Continuing to monitor. And now I just need um, a repair tool so I can fix things. Oh god, hello. All right, let's just scan everything and anything that we can. Hi, yeah. Let's learn about our environment. Let's scan the farting fish. Gasopod, get scanned. Oh god, you have to hold it for quite some time. Hiya! You have been scanned. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna just put the PDA pause on because then I get to just do this. And we can pause the game and I get to read. Okay. We're going to affectionately refer to the gasopod as the farting fish from now on which is a slow moving life form and one of the larger herbivores on the planet. Providing a substantial meal to would be predators, the gasopod protects its domain by filling the surrounding water with poisonous and corrosive pods whose contents dissolve even synthetic fibers. Filtration system, thick non-reactive skin and multiple gill layers render this creature impervious to the noxious acid clouds it produces, an algae gland, a bulbous sac-like appendage on the rear end, a luminescent yellow algae grows inside the sac and produces the poisonous compound. Abdominal muscles can contract, causing the algae gland to emit the noxious compound into the surrounding water. Large pelvic fins, capable of powerful movement through the water when moving in small herds. Behavior. They appear to be social in nature and may even use their emissions in their relationship rituals. The audible calls are likely signifiers of nearby threats or food sources. Approach with caution. Acidic pods may be retrieved and repurposed. Okay, you can get their acidic pods. Interesting. Okay. Um... Scan. Table coral. 
Jesus. Man, this is good. We're going to have a lot of reading to do, I think, as we figure out everything. Each disc is an individual colony of microorganisms filtering nutrients from the water. Growth patterns indicate the colonies are in direct competition for positions with superior current or light. Unlike other coral species, its structure is malleable, softly pulsating as it pumps nutrients to its uh, extremities and only turning rigid when it senses physical assault. The jewel-like nodes in the surface are concentrated buildups of rare minerals the coral is unable to process. Exploitable in computer chip fabrication. Okay. Like I said, this is going to be a... We're going to be in... We're going to be in big old learning part of this game. We're going, we're going to be learning. Um, so we're going to figure this out. It is getting... It is getting dark again. There you go. It's getting dark again. Exploitable. Acid mushroom. A spore-bearing fungi species, the flesh contains a highly acidic compound which leaches into the water if the outer skin is penetrated. It is not clear which predator species necessitated such extreme countermeasures, but the acid mushroom's number suggests it has successfully deterred most of them. Inedible. Acid has applications in battery fabrication. Um, how do I use this flashlight? It's just automatic. Perfect. Put it in your own eyes. How does it work underwater? Nice. Great, this isn't terrifying at all. Um, and then it's got power, so we have to worry about that. Can't scan these. Writhing weed. Well adapted to both shallow waters and cave systems, this plant lives in symbiosis with a coral species which forms around the base of the stems. What is that? God, that makes such a huge difference, dude. Oh, Jesus. What is going on but down there? What's going on here? It's a geyser. Seconds. This oxygen spoiling my fun. Oh, can this launch me out? No? Okay. I was seeing if I would get pro propulsed. Nope. Guess I'll make my own way out. I'm assuming that, like, going to the big ship is probably not hugely worth doing yet until we have a repair tool under our belt. If we get the repair tool, then everything should come after that, right? How do we get these fr fragments? Oh, you just have to scan them. Oh. Okay. I guess that's fine. So you scan it and then it disappears. Alright. Uh, fuck. Where was the other one? I told you guys we to commit it to memory. I think it's over this way somewhere. At the very least, we know that it's in a box. That's going to speed up stuff real quick. That'll be nice. Um, yeah, I think... We're looking for a box. That is salt. Not a box. Um, damn, I don't remember where it was, but it was like, it, it guys, it was it was somewhere. You gotta believe me. I guess I should be uh, also scanning every. This is very overwhelming, by the way. I'm trying to keep my cool as much as possible, but there's so much. Uh, maybe what I'll do is because this game does a pretty decent job of. Um, showing us what's what's new in the databank is I'll try and just like bulk put stuff in the databank and then we'll have like a reading session or some shit. Come here, Gary Fish. God, it takes so long to... Yeah! They ate one of you. They've got such silly faces. My inventory is going to be full soon, isn't it? Because the metal salvage takes up quite a few spots. 
I'm looking for a seed glider fragment, and I can't remember where it went. I'm assuming with the whole solar power thing that I need to make like a solar panel or something, and that will allow it to like charge a flashlight. Unless it's a one-time use and I have to like make a new one, which I could see being a very real possibility. Oh, we got a wreckage here. This doesn't look like the, where the fragment was. Grav trap fragment. Hiya! Okay, that's also one out of two. Oh, there's the other one. That was much easier than the sea glider one. Hell yeah! Oh, oh, there might be a sea glider fragment in there. I don't know if the the game like has like a limited amount, like if there's only two to find or whether there's multiple. But these boxes do look like the sea glide fragment ones. Show me the money. Ah, oh, I can't open them. God damn, these are not open. Well, that's not good. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yo. New blueprint acquired. Get over here, Peeper. Oh, this is a goddamn mission. Gotcha. <laughs> they do be peeping. What is that noise? Oh my god. Right. Quick to the surface. I'm gonna drown. Oh god. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm trying. I'm going as fast as possible. Oh my god. Ugh. Ain't no drowning here today. We are still nowhere near getting any of these materials. So we're doing great, baby. Let's do a let's do a little check. Let's see what let's see what's going on. Grav trap and sea glide. Oh god, we need we need many things. We need lubricant of all things. Copper wire. Okay, gotcha. We'll craft some more titanium without metal salvage because I guess we're always going to need that. That seems like a pretty consistent thing. I'm a cooker peeper. The fabricator cooks small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. Nice. That's a lot of food and gives us some HTO. Protein rich eyeballs, highly nutritious. Yummy. Oh, we can equip stuff. We have like an actual thing. Cool. Gotcha. Wonderful. I knew that. Um I'm going to need to craft like waterproof containers at some point, right? Because this is going to fill up like real quick. Can I just like drop stuff on the ground in here though? Like if it's like something that I don't really need. Oh, it won't let me. It won't let me. It won't let me. I can only like throw it away if I'm like out of the pod. So I'm like, get these out of here because I don't need them. Uh I'm gonna scan you. Get over here. These ones are hard to get. Cause they they swim away real fast. Hiya, rabbit ray. Get scanned. Gotcha. A rabbit ray. This is like really gorgeous though. I'm like, I'm enjoying just like going for a swim. The water looks real nice. Like I'm terrified of the of the deep ocean, but I can separate that right now and just admire that this is quite a pretty thing that we got going on right now. Oh god damn, there's a lot in here. Uh sea glide, grab trap. Survival knife, an air bladder.
Ooh, fins to enhance our swim speed. Looks like we really want to go for like just upgrading our, you know, what we what we need to be faster and more efficient. And then the rest comes later. Problem being, I don't know what the hell that I'm really doing at the moment, so we'll just see how we go. Oh, we can just make lockers and stuff. Hang on a minute, I can just make more storage. Cool. Alright, so there are some, it seems like there are some pretty decent, like, visual uh, clues of, like, what type of materials you can get and where. Like, I think this is limestone? Yeah. Nice. Bop! And that's how you get your materials. Okay. I'm just gonna do this for a while. I like that we've got cool music to go with it. Creep vine. Oh, hang on. Creep vine. I need this shit. This is what I need. Time to go harvesting. Where are you? Aha! Just what I've been looking for. Give me that. Life on this planet grows in unusually distinct and diverse ecological biomes. Yeah. The study recommended. Uh, I can make a bunch of silicon rubber now, baby. Hell yeah. That's a gold mine right there. Okay, my inventory is full. Oh, they're huge. That's why. Okay. All right, well, let's go. Let's get crafting. I don't need this much, but also I was so excited to finally find some. It's been forever, obviously. I mean, I gotta, I've, I gotta say I've survived for days. We've had multiple, multiple day and night cycles. I am clearly a survival expert. Um. It all feels very easy to, uh, to, to, I guess, like, use and get into, I suppose. Uh, it's very, um, noob-friendly. If you've never done any of this before, it feels very, like, easy to, like, you know, get a feel for everything. Um, cool. I've done the silicon rubber. We've almost got a repair tool. Um... Battery and copper wire. So I need copper ore again. I need that stuff. Warning. Local radiation readings suggest the Aurora's drive core has reached critical state. Oh. Detonation will occur within two hours. Oh, cool. So I'm I'm dead. Okay. Am I dead? Do I have to quickly get this repair tool and go and repair a quantum core? Am I fucked? Okay, hold on. I'm doing my best. I need cave sulfur to get a repair tool. Oh my god. Two hours? But the days go... The days, they go fast. Shit. Alright guys, I think our first Subnautica run is going to result in quantum core detonation and we're going to die. Um... Oh god, these are the evil things that blew me up last time. Where is the cave sulfur at? This is a cave. Hey guys, quantum core detonation. But, but shuttle bug, I must scan. Oh my god. What is this? Lead. Sulfur-based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. I feel like we are screwed, guys. So I'm just kind of trying, giving my best shot to still kind of 
explore to get a feel for things before our apparent inevitable uh, death. Uh, what is that? Egg. Uh, I need... Come on, guys. Copper ore. Oh, it's ho Oh, I'm almost dead. Am I almost dead? Is that what's going on here? No, I'm not almost dead. I thought my, uh... Health was empty for a second there. Okay. I like being able to pause while we're underwater. It gives me time to think. Um, I'm going to drop this stuff real quick so I can have some more space. I want to know where to get the goddamn cave. So far, I would think that you'd get it while you were in a cave, but apparently not. 30 seconds. All right, the water is a bit spicy, it's a bit hot, but we're okay. Maybe that doesn't count as a cave. God damn, all I need is some... All I need is some cave sulfur. Because um, I don't think it has... Because we haven't scanned it or found it yet, so it wouldn't be in here yet. So I don't even know what I'm looking for. Because if I had cave sulfur... I would have a repair tool, and then this quantum core would not blow up in my face. So this has now become search for the cave sulfur. While I'm being laughed at by fartfish. This is a cave. No, it's not. Damn it. We've been pretty good on resources so far. Except for these. I don't know how time works in this game because it's like two hours, but it feels like the day and night cycle is pretty quick. Oh god. Oh, they're, they're, oh, they're cold crash fish. <gasps> yes. 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 We found a cave system. What am I looking for? I'm panicking now because I feel like we're on a time limit and we're going to explode. It's quartz. My inventory is full. I'm going to run out of oxygen too. Right, we're going to dive back in. I need to go back to the surface and then we're going to go back down. We got this. We're going to prevent our death <laughs> fire explosion. All right. Back in. Cave solver. Let's go. Let's get this repair tool. I'm stressfully looking around here. I don't know if you can get them from them. I'm looking for something that looks different. Oh, gold. I'm getting blown up by things while I'm desperately trying to check out this. Oh! <gasps> Cave sulfur is in. Oh, it's in these things. Alright, drop some shit. Give me that. Yes! Okay. It's a sulfur. It's a plant. Okay, it's a plant. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's drink some water. Let's get back to base. Let's build this repair tool. Let's prevent quantum explosion. Will we make it in time? I don't know. Oh, I just dropped the water on the instead of drinking it. Hold on. I'm getting stressed out. <laughs> I dropped it instead of drinking it. Drink it and eat. Vital signs stabilizing. Alright, I'm super hungry. I am super not hungry anymore, because I accidentally ate food as well. I'm keeping my composure. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Alright, now we gotta swim over to this guy. But then we also have to figure out. How to, you know, not have it blow up. Okay, here we go, here we go. Fabricator. Uh, tools. Repair tool. Make this baby. 
Let's go. Okay, I have repair tool. Let's start. Let's let's repair. Hiya. Let's make stuff happen. Lightport secondary systems online. Yo. Full environment diagnostic and outputting results to data bank. Nice. Uh, radio. There's a message to play. Um. I would love to listen to this. Perfect. Okay. Um, okay. So. What's the thing that's supposed to be blowing up? Is it the life pod or is it the massive ship? Because I don't, because I don't know. I'm head, we're heading to the ship now because I, it sounded like, hang on, I can check, can't I? Um, what is going to, local radiation readings suggest the drive core. Hang on, is the Aurora, is the Aurora the life pod or the big ship? No, that's the Aurora. Yeah, no, that's the Aurora. This thing's going to blow the fuck up. Okay. To the ship! It feels like it's been more than two hours. But I have the repair tool. Um, we did it. <laughs> um, don't know how this is going to go. But uh, we can try. I've just kind of panicked, repaired my life pod, and now I'm going to panic swim over this thing and use my repair tool uh, and then game over, right? The credits will roll and then we've successfully subnautica all over the place. I think that's how this works. Let's do a nice healthy backstroke. I feel like it's been more than two hours because it's a new day again. Scans suggest this biome supports extensive biome diversity and connects to a number of small cave networks. God, there's going to be so much to explore underneath this as well. Because there's going to be so much wreckage. Hold on, baby, I'm coming. With my singular repair tool, I will fix this quantum drive core. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, I think the drive core has already exploded. Quantum detonation sounded like I was going to die, though. Warning. Local radiation readings suggest the Aurora's drive core has reached critical state. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. I feel like it's definitely happened, right? Okay, so it's now got radiation, which means I would have to build, I would have to create a radioactive protecty muck suit, right? Because it was talking about that in our data bank where we've got. Uh, let's have a look. I don't think these are the radiation ones. It does say designed to withstand the most extreme conditions in the known universe, though. So maybe we can? Because I think it said on here that it says all environment protection suits. Some life pods are equipped with different supplies, such as radiation suits. Like it specifically mentions radiation suits. Right, we can save the game and I haven't saved the game yet. So maybe I'm just going to save the game and then I'm just going to go and into uncharted waters and see if this radiation is dangerous to me. Can I get radiated? Oh, my screen's getting fuzzy. Nope, my health's going down. My health, my health is going down. Okay, this is not good. We don't have a radiation suit. All right. Um, 
don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. I think that means that the quantum drive core has already exploded, right? And now there's just radiation. Cool. For some reason, I thought that we had to quickly make and create shit and then just like fix it to not actually die. I thought we were going to die. Cool. So I was freaking out for no reason. I was freaking out for no reason. That's fine. All right. Let's make this sea glider. Let's make these batteries. Let's let's get this stuff happening then. And then eventually we're going to have to withstand radiation to get in there, I assume. That'll be that, that that's now a long-term goal. It's no longer a short-term goal. I have no idea how big this area is either and it's kind of like stressing me cuz I'm like this is huge. Like, just the distance between my life pod and the Aurora feels ex extensive. Oh! There it is. Emergency. A quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor will reach a supercritical state. 18 minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay. Okay. Damn. It okay, I was see was I was expecting an explosion to take place, but I'm like, how long is hours? It's like this will happen in two hours, and I'm like, it feels like it's been way more. Okay, so it's supposed to happen. Lead and fiber mesh providing insulation from radiation. So now we'll build a radiation suit to explore a exploded area uh of the of the ship gotcha so we've crash landed on this planet and now we're just poisoning the planet and we're gonna kill it isn't that fun we're just like hey guys let's just drop a giant spaceship atom bomb on the ground and just have fun right have fun um i need some water please which means i need to go get some bladder fish I'm thirsty. Okay. I spent so long struggling about other stuff that I've neglected my other needs because I thought that I was going to blow up. Uh, okay. I wonder if we're going to have some... We're going to witness some crazy effects that the radiation would have on the... The radiation would have on the local life. Um, mm, mm, mm. There you are. I need all of you for water. Get in my inventory. Pick up as many as possible. Water is a precious resource. Uh, my inventory is full. Hold on. Throw away something that I don't need, like the peeper for now. For another... Fucking fish, get in here! All right, I need to drink water. We're gonna die. I'm assuming that if our water runs out or our hunger, then it just will take away from our health for a while. So it's not like the end of the world. God, isn't this fun? Okay, it is time for water. Give me a drink, please. Crisis averted. Let's just make multiple waters. Okay, water is pretty easy to access. We're just killing all of the local wildlife for our own enjoyment uh, and survival. We're just going, well, none of these fish are more important than me because I am exploring in the name of science. Yeah, let's, let's get a knife. Hell yeah. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. 
the knife remains the only exception. Massacre on Braxis Prime. What's going, what's going on there? Okay. Okay. Say less. You want to tell me about that? It was a massacre at some point. Okay. I'm going to store some water in there. I can make the battery. I can make a sea glider. Look at us go, dude. Sea glide converts torque into thrust underwater via propellant. Let's go. Wow. Give me a big old sea glider. The sea glide will increase your effective exploration range. Oh yeah, dude. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Okay. How do we make fiber mesh? Because the ingredients are unknown. Okay. All right. What does power 38 out of 75 mean? Oh, sh oh, the solar power. Right. Right. That makes sense. Cool. Look at that. Perfect. Um, I'm going to throw away these eggs because I don't need them yet. I need to prioritize my own safety before I learn about eggs. Um, what can I make with... Let's make some stuff. Let's, let, let. Uh, wiring kit. Let's make one of those. Look at that. Uh, let's... Make titanium. Let's make glass. Let's just go crazy. Um, let's also make... Should we fuck around with uh, whatever this is? Let's make a floating air pump. And pipes. Let's have a look and see what this uh, whole pipe party is all about. Gotcha. Okay. We got pipes. I got this stuff. Oh, it's great. All right, we're doing good. All right, actually, I should build. How do you build a locker? Uh, uh, waterproof locker. I need more titanium. All right, more titanium, please. And then if I build a locker. I can put more stuff in there. Okay. Um, obviously, I can't do it here, right? But if I go up here... Well, that, yeah, that definitely blew up. And if I just fucking drop that... Oh, God. It doesn't float. Does it float? Okay. Can I get it to float? <laughs> Pack it up. Okay. Uh, okay. And then if I, I can just store some stuff in there for a bit. Actually, I'm going to throw that egg away. Let's put some materials in there. Because I got gold. I don't know what to do with gold yet. Perfect. All right, I've got a storage container that's just chilling out near there. Is it protected? Like, can it be eaten or attacked? <laughs> like, is that a thing that can happen? Is it safe? Is it secret? Goodbye, my eggs. Okay. I'm going to just assume that that is safe there. Sorry that this is probably very chaotic as I figure out what the hell's going on, guys. <laughs> But we're, we're seeing what happens, all right? Vital signs stabilizing. Now, we now are going to test out this air pump thing. All right, we're going to get... We're going to get air pumpy with it. All right, so... Uh, pumps, ears, and pipes. So if I just drop this... That is now an air pump, and then... 
I need pipes. I guess I should bind this to a slot, shouldn't I? Pipe. Oh, how does this, how do I make pipes work? <laughs> uh, Axe is a starting point for a pipe chain. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And then pipe. Oh, wait. What? Okay. I see. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Look. Look at this. Science. Okay. So now, do I just get oxygen from this or what? How does this work? Yeah, you just get oxygen just by hanging out near it and then you can pick it up. Oh my god, this is really cool. And then I can just pick pack it all up and set it up again later. That's really cool. So you can just like be like, man, I need to go down real deep here, but I need oxygen. So you just make yourself a little pipe thing and then off you go. Okay, I'm really liking this. This is cool. Um, and then I can whip out whip out the goddamn um, sea glide and just be like I'm a go now oh it's got lights on it congratulations survivor you Whee. exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500% data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity be sure to vary your routine for uniform muscle oh. development this is cool. All right, we got cool lights. Where my pipe? Where my pipe at? I already need oxygen. Um, and we got a map too. Okay, you can see how deep we are. That's cool. Okay, look at us go, dude. All right. Survival knife. I can now use this. Is it said I could cut the vines? Creep vine with a knife. Huh! Guys, Minecraft. Uh, I need some of this um, for stuff again, I think. This game just gets like more exciting the more you play, I think, because you start like building stuff and being like, oh, cool, that's how that works. And it just feels very cool. Stuff does have power, is what I'm seeing. And I'm assuming once it runs out of power, you might have to like craft it again. I'm not sure if there's charging capabilities, but there we go. We're going to go back to our... Whoa, is that a fucking... That's... Is that a creature? Is that a big whale? Don't laugh at me. Is that a big whale, dude? This looks like a big fucking whale and there's another one in the back. Let's take a look at this. Whoa. It's got a whole growth on it. What is this? Oh god. It looks so reef back. Oh my god. We're gonna go back to our little place and do some reading now. Whoa! What the hell? Has it got st oh. Ooh. It's got a whole ecosystem going on on its back. Let's get some, let's get some information. What is that? What is that? Break barnacle? Hey, yeah. Oh, copper ore, hang on. Uh, oh God, my vine's decomposing. Okay. Only just got it. God damn, they're pretty close to the surface.
Wow, look at this thing. It's so weird. Oh god, I'm being attacked. Oh, it's shooting stuff at me. How rude. Where was that? I didn't even see where I broke that. Oops. Dude, the music's cool. It's just like the sense of discovery here is really, really neat. I love the music. Yeah, oh, they had tentacles. Oh, you can go right in them. I can go inside of you. You're a transparent creature. How transparent? Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> I see right through you. Whoa. This is how you die. I don't know if it's got capability of, uh, I don't know if it's got those capabilities of eating me, or if it's a herbivore. We'll find out. We gotta go read the, uh, the lore entry for it. <laughs> so cool. I'm assuming it's n not possible to prevent this ship from blowing up. I mean, we tried our best. I'm like, I'm gonna go there with my one repair tool and fix a whole radioactive leak. Quantum core ass explosion. No problem. Um, did not work out very well for me. All right, my my storage is still there. Perfect. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a quick break, real quick, and then we're gonna read. We're gonna get to some reading of everything that we've just scanned. All right, let's do some data bank reading. Let's have a look. So we've got the radiation suit. Uh, this suit fully protects against the effects of radiation during land, sea, and space exploration. Safety rated up to 400 SVs an hour, cross compatible with all AEP suit functionality, and it's sleek, a necessary precaution in a post mad world. Okay. Uh, we got a, a 4546B environment scan. There we go. We've now scanned the environment. So this is a category three ocean planet. Oxygen, nitrogen atmosphere, extensive biodiversity. May support Leviathan class predators. Water contaminated with high levels of foreign bacteria and planet is beyond Federation space. Rescue is unlikely. It is not recommended to explore this environment without hazardous material suits and extensive support apparatus. Okay. So I'm assuming that our, our goal naturally would be to figure out how to get off the planet, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so limestone outcrops can give titanium and copper. These unusual geological structures often form around titanium and copper deposits and are distinct to this planet. Closer analysis reveals the stone around the metal has been hardened against erosion, but the mechanism remains unknown. Uh, coral shell plate. This variant of coral has adapted to survive in close proximity to other corals, filtering nutrients from the water and sharing them via a spore-like substance which grows around the base. I think what's really cool is the information that we can get from this kind of stuff is it's like, hey, nothing is here. But you want titanium and copper? you're looking for these. And so it's a good little dictionary for us to refer to. This is the rabbit ray, which is a her herbivorous aquatic life form. Rabbit rays appear to live serene and solitary lives with few predators, a natural sense of curiosity, and awesomely poisonous flesh. Awesomely poisonous. Twin orange appendages mounted on the head sense vibration in the water. They, uh, their undulating wings are markedly similar method of transportation to that as Earth rays. Zero genetic resemblance detected, suggesting these two species independently developed similar solutions to their environmental circumstances. Evidence indicates its large, side-facing eyes are, rel are relatively recent adaptations. It is likely there are related ray species in other environmental biomes on the planet. Inedible, but harmless. We've got our small herbivores, like the the boomerang. 
God, it's such an interesting little design. A herbivore encountered in large numbers, found to frequent shallow waters and move in schools. Serrated teeth suggest adaptation for grinding corals other herbivores are unable to digest. Twin fins. Unusually, this species' two fins are cartil cartilaginous extension of its own skeleton. They are less prone to damage and provide superior propulsion, but are also harder to grow back. The bright blue tips are in fact the ends of its digestive tract where the luminescence of the corals it consumes is most focused. Okay. Most active during daylight hours and prone to flee on approach, the boomerang can more easily be observed at night when its luminescence gives it away and seeks the shelter of the seabed. All right. So it tells you its behavior and where you can find it at different points in the, in the, in the day. Yes, Gary Fish. Slow moving and curious herbivore. Got a, a lot of herbivores on this planet. Camouflage indicates adaptation for evasive behavior on the ocean floor. Edible. Slow and docile. And we got the peepers. Uh, like, accurately named. Fast prey fish encountered in shallow waters and rich in protein. Okay. Powerful fins. More intelligent than the usual small herbivore. High calorie count. So you want to get peepers for that, for that big, big edible nature. Further research required, it says. Okay. Uh, we've got Leviathan. So I guess this is what they were just talking about with the reef back that we scanned. So Leviathan class. The vast life form is in excess of 30 meters long and has been designated Leviathan class. Fortunately, it feeds exclusively on plankton-like life forms in the water, so it's very much like a whale. Um, chitinous shell, most of the life form's top side and some of its underside is protected by a thick layered exoskeleton. This suggests an evolutionary path quite different from other organisms on 4546b, most of which are vertebrate in nature. The reefback species has likely been able to grow far larger than other herbivores because anything large enough to break through its shell has long since gone extinct. Enzyme pods, similar in appearance to the algae glands of the gasopod, these organs on the reefback's underside serve some unknown purpose in its digestive system and are capable of expelling small quantities of stomach enzymes into the surrounding waters. A local microcosm. An array of different barnacle and plant species grow on the reefback shell, thrusting their roots into ancient scars in the chitin and taking advantage of their mobility to avoid predation. Nonetheless, reefbacks will often be pursued by the faster, hungrier herbivores, and thus this leviathan species is a mobile microcosm worthy of years of study in itself. Cool. Reefbacks' lifespans likely extend through many centuries should they survive their initial growth cycle. For the first few decades, their smaller size would make them vulnerable to carnivorous leviathans, sociable, seen traveling in small pods, and communicating by an echoing call. Behavior is consistent with low-level sentience. Harbors plants, small fish, and metal-rich barnacles. We've got the shuttle bug, this weird little thing. Common scavenger found at the base of the food chain. So it's a li of little threat. Necessary waste recycler. Presence may indicate nearby cave systems. Cool. Uh, creep vines are a kelp species concentrated in large forests. Uh, vital alien resource, also edible and has construction applications. The sulfur plant, which we have now discovered. <laughs> Uh, a nest for explosive organisms which guard them. So when we see those exploders, um, we know we're near sulfur. And there's applications in construction of the repair tool. Redwort, a regress shell. The tiger plant, which shoots spikes at you. Capable of incapacitating small herbivores, but it lacks carnivorous digestive organs. Avoid or incapacitate. Cut them up with my knife. Veined nettle, violet bew, bow, violet bow. Perfect. All right. So there's going to be some stuff here that's just basically short little descriptive things. And then there are going to be actual things that are like, hey, you're going to need this for stuff, you know? So that's cool. Land recorded distress call. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't want us. This might happen. 
Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Oh, cool. Okay, so we've actually got... We're going to have um, distress calls come up, and we can go and search for it. It's 600 meters away, so we can take our little... We can take our little life pod and, uh, not our life pod, sorry, our, um, what's it called? Sea glide and have a little adventure. Um, let's put some shit away. Let's get some resources that we're going to need. I'm going to cook some, I'm going to cook some fish. So we've got some food and I'm going to make sure that we have some water, which means I'm going to go get some more of those thingies. Oh, actually, oh, this is now rotten. God, it does not, it does not last up very long, this stuff. I'm going to put that away, and then we're going to ditch the other stuff. Arzy. We're going to rescue Arzy. We're going to do that so we don't have to worry about that. How long does, um, I wonder how long cooked food lasts for... Because it seems to me that we have confirmation that uh, stuff can decay and and rot. So if I have a look, it just says cooked. And I guess maybe it's this little meter on the side here. Okay, so there's some good food. Uh, I'm going to go get some more water fish. So I can go yeah, and get a lot of water because I'm thirsty. God, if only we could just convert this water, which is has so much bacteria in it, to just drinkable water. That would solve all of our problems. All right. I'm sure as we move on uh, throughout a playthrough like this as well, we'll sort of get more comfortable and we'll figure out what the hell's going on and how to actually play the game and it should get a little bit smoother but we're taking it easy for like exploration at the moment and just seeing how it goes um so as we get more used to things we'll probably it'll it'll you know we'll probably showcase different things that i end up doing maybe if i'm doing a monotonous a monotonous task like going to get fish for water um i will probably just you know be able to cut it out and be like we'll just chill a little bit Try not to swim through all the fart gas. Oh god, look at look at them all. But for now, we're you know we're learning, so we're figuring it all out. Just scavenging our bladder fish at the moment because we need water. Good thing that they're not very fast. That's new. What's that? Hoverfish. Hoverfish. That looks cool. Small, cautious herbivore, commonly found in kelp-rich environment. They have charged foot pads. Six unique limb appendages feature charged pads capable of ionizing the surrounding water. The hoverfish uses this ability to maintain its position against the current as it feeds from kelp and lichen. Cool. So many cool little creature eggs, but like... We don't even have alien containers yet, so we're not going to focus too much on that. Um, I think what we should do is... Oh, what the fuck is that? What we should do is we're going to get our pipe thing and our AirPod, <laughs> our AirPods, and then we're going to go off in search of this distress call, maybe. All right, we got, a, we got a stalker. This looks like a carnivore. A streamlined predator encountered in the kelp forests in weight of prey, leaving the safety of the shallows to feed. The stalker likely carved out its evolutionary niche at the sweet spot between speed and size millions of years ago, and maybe one of the oldest species on the planet. The stalker appears to be attracted to titanium deposits, which tends to sharpen and put stress on its teeth. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract hungry stalkers by feeding them. So you just be like, throw a fish at it. 
The stalker's teeth are unusually hard and fast growing. Its elongated snout can deliver huge biting pressure to larger attackers while also being used to reach small herbivores seeking refuge amongst the rocks. Night vision. Retinal layering on the eyeball suggests adaptation for nighttime hunting. Dorsal ridges can be moved independently to deliver superior maneuverability. Pelvic fins are long and powerful. The stalker has evolved to hunt the fastest of prey. And assessment. Stalker teeth may have applications in enameled glass fabrication. Um, cool. Stalker teeth, which means we can fight these bad boys? Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm, I... Um, oh, oh! Okay. Fuck up this fish. Fuck you, fish. Alright, we're gonna actually become the predator. How dare you attack me? We... we... The hunter becomes the hunted! You did yet? It's running away from me, see? It knows... It knows that it's in danger. You wanna throw down with me, you stalker? Oh god. Cut this bad boy into pieces. Alright, we are we are a hunter in these oceans. We are not to be messed with. Look how much it's running away. It's terrified of me. Come on. You wanna to come for another run? 30 seconds. You dead yet? This is insane. I, don't, I need to go up for air, but I'm going to lose the... I'm, you're running away! Oh, this sucks. Damn it. I gotta go up for air. I gotta go up for air. How disappointing. Alright, we're going right back down again. I don't even know if I don't even know if this is the one. But it's A1. Alright, we're getting distracted and we're we're hunting. Oh god, look how deep this is. Oh you know what? I think without realizing we've really just taken ourselves somewhere, haven't we? Oh god, there's another one. I can see you. You want to throw down? Why are you why are you like this? This knife is not very strong. At the very least, if we fight against them, they run away. They ain't got nothing on me. All right, I got distracted. <laughs> they wanted to hunt me, and I show them that they they shouldn't mess with me. Look at them go, though. Is it possible to just... Yeah, yeah. Come on. Surely we can kill one. Surely we can kill one. Seek fluid intake immediately. Look at him trying to hunt. Yeah, that's right. As long as you swim in the direction of my life pod, we'll be fine. This is not easy. Oh god. Hang on, what have you got in your mouth? You've got metal scrap. Give me that. You wanna throw down? I got a knife. I got a knife. I got a knife. I'm not scared of them. I'm not I'm not scared of them. Alright. We're going to make water, and then we're going to embark on a journey to a random distress signal. Can't even help- I can barely help myself. But we're going to help someone else, apparently. Alright, it's water time. So it costs power- costs five power to, like, use the fabricator to make certain things, so... Making stuff during the day is probably better because solar power exists. So maybe you'll be able to like craft stronger stuff.
Okay. We are now sufficiently thirst quenched. Vital signs stabilizing. Good. Um, we can see that this fish that we have cooked is now old. So I'm going to consume it while I still have the time. But there you go. So it, it will degrade over time. All right, we're going to heal ourselves. We're going to grab a new first aid kit out of the fabricator. Uh, we are now fully stocked up. I'm going to save the game. And we're going to go 600 meters that away and just see what happens. So let's go for it. I love the light. This is so cool. Look how cool this place looks at night. Bioluminescence. This is awesome. Looks like it's actually quite uh, stranded near a cave system and under attack. Cool. Well, I hope they like survival knives. Whoa! Hello. Oh, right, yeah. Oxygen's a thing. We've just been getting lost. I've just been getting lost in the pretty lights. I was like, this is just beautiful. Okay, I see a life pod. Under attack, hey? Oh. Oh. Is that what they're under attack by? Look at that. Should I just distract them? Maybe I should scan it first. You reckon I could get away with that? Oh, this place got wrecked. Seamoth fragment. Seamoth. Ooh. Yeah, this place got destroyed. Abandoned PDA. Oh! Integrating new PDA data. Scan the biter before it does too much damage to me. Just hold down. There we go. Oh god! Look at how look at how cool it looks, though. All right. Oh, actually, I forget that you can just do that to be a bit faster. There you go. Why did I think that there was actually going to be survivors? Hey, I need to just get used to pulling this out whenever I want to zip around. I forget about it, to be honest. I'm not used to it yet. Oh shit, that's the thing that attacked him. Give me a big boy. Sand shark! Hey! Whoa! Crazy! Look at it go! I must scan you. Settle down. Settle down. God, this is terrifying. It's in the sand. Which you Ooh, it disappeared. Okay. Oh god. Hey, okay. seconds I want to scan that bad boy but yep all right we got an abandoned PDA we will read that and I've got a seamoth fragment so I guess we want to investigate the surroundings here to probably Oxygen. see more just trying to get a cool little view of the, of the place I think the scanning progress, like, um, saves as you go. Look at it try and eat stuff. Isn't it cute? Now I can see again, because it's daytime. Oh, you're really going to make me hold this one for so long? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thanks for holding. Oh, oh. I'm a hunter of the seas. You fucker. I, I trapped you. I trapped you in my ship. Yes. Did I just kill it? Look at me. I'm a hunter. Look at that. You don't look so threatening now, do you? <laughs> 
I can't even harvest it for like resources. Nice. You don't scare me. Capitan of the seas right there. It fell into my trap. Lure it into my uh, abandoned life pod. Cut it to pieces. <laughs> All right. These predators ain't got nothing on Mr. Subnautica. Mr. John Subnautica is going to kill you all. Oh, look. Oh, they're feasting on it. Look at that. Because now they've got food. Look at that. It's really interesting. That's awesome. Let's take a moment to read some stuff then. Let's celebrate our victory with some light reading, shall we? Uh, let's have a look at what the sea moth is, by the way. Ooh, this looks like a cool little submersible thing. The sea moth is a one person vehicle with an independent replaceable power cell fitted in the rear and fully customizable design. Low power, multi-directional thrusters enable it to function equally well in sea or space environments. Most long range vessels carry at least two vessels of this class to facilitate the exploration and exploitation of small astronomical bodies. However, they can also be fabricated at a standard mobile vehicle bay. Cool. Crush depths, 200 meters below sea level. So we're gonna go 200. Distance per power cell, 10 kilometers. Four upgrade mod module slots. Seamoths may be modified by installing upgrade modules to the access point mounted on the wing. These include increased cargo, superior power, pressure, and collision compensation, enhanced sonar, and defensive capabilities. Um, these modules may only be manufactured at a moon pool outfitted with a vehicle modification station. The Seamoth, it goes anywhere but land. Uh, so you can manufacture upgrade modules at a moon pool. I do not know what that means. This is our abandoned PDA, LifePod 17 crew log. Ozzy's log. It's the day of the crash. I don't know what the heck is happening. I'm scared and I'm not going outside. There are shadows in the water under the hatch, but I can't tell if they're rocks or aliens. And there's weird looking caves nearby. The Aurora was carrying everything needed to build the phase gate. Mobile vehicle bays, bioreactors, propulsion cannons. It had a cinema. There, there was a zero G gym. My cafe. I don't understand how we're here now. I don't know why no one's coming for me. Okay, so the day of the crash, that was two days ago. Or well, three days ago now. Shadows in the water under the hatch, can't tell the rocks or aliens. Okay, weird looking caves nearby. So, phase gate, mobile vehicle bays, bioreactors, had a, had a cinema, my cafe. Okay, gotcha. We got some stuff nearby that we want to look for. We're going to find another part of this sea moth. This is the biter. Vicious pack hunting predator, 94% muscle, 4% connective tissue, 2% brain. Indiscriminate when hungry, almost always hungry. Specialized olfactory antenna employed in detection of bodily fluids in the water at impressive range. A secondary pair of eyes likely dedicated to detecting the peripheral movement of larger predators and hungry members of its own species. As an overdeveloped tail fin favors outpacing and outnumbering their prey over individual maneuverability. Calculations suggest creatures up to 100 times the biter's body weight could succumb to a focused assault by a pack of 10. Avoid packs and try not to bleed. The sand shark, look at that bad boy, a powerful medium-sized predator that burrows into the sand and ambushes its prey from below. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract sand sharks by feeding any hungry specimens that draw close. As a forward dorsal fin, the unusual location of this fin suggests a purpose unrelated to movement through the water, may be employed in shifting sand beneath the surface, or in mating rituals, or may simply be an evolutionary dead end. Segmented exoskeleton. Thick armor plating renders the sand shark almost immune to attack from above. While it is capable of impressive acceleration, its exoskeleton prevents it from changing direction quickly. The sand shark is thus a perfect designed ambush hunter, but ill suited to sustained pursuits. Like when you trap it in a ship and stab its underbelly. <laughs> Feet. Ill designed for ambulation, likely used to disturb the surface of the sand so the life form can burrow into the ground and avoid. Be vigilant for ambush in sandy biomes. Ain't got nothing on me, baby. It's fine. 
It's dead is what it is. Okay, so let's have a look around. Ooh, this looks like a strange cave to me. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Ooh, okay. 30 seconds. Yeah, actually, yeah, we are pretty deep, huh? I didn't realize that. Um, well, we've got one Seamoth fragment. We should look for another. This is a bit of fun little journey, hasn't it? You can zoom around on this thing quite well. Or something over here. Laser cutter fragment. Laser cutter. One out of three. Okay. Oh, hang on. There's big wreckage over here. Thirty seconds. I really need to work on that uh, better uh, oxygen tank, don't I? And I can actually fuck around here for a bit longer. Let's take a look. Blueprints. Uh, what do I need for the... Oh, Seamoth is one out of three. Damn. I thought it was one out of two. Uh, where is my... This one. So I need a standard tank, glass, titanium, silver ore. Oh, I should be able to make this. I'm pretty sure I've got some silver ore. Pretty sure I can make this. Yeah. I should just be able to make that. I reckon I can definitely make that with silicon rubber as well. I'm pretty sure I've got this stuff. Oh, fiber meshes, creep vine samples. That's what we're getting the creep vine stuff for. Cool. Okay. I'll put that there. I think what's a good thing for me and my brain is we can put this stuff there just as a reminder that it's like, hey, this is what you're looking for, which is really nice. Locks. Okay. Thirty seconds. Yeah, we don't. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I think we might have to go back. Scan a room fragment. What is this? There's so many fragments of things. That's also one out of three. Integrating new PDA data. Blueprints. Scanner room. Okay. Um. <coughs> nice. Okay. Um. How do you leave a mark? How do you leave a... You know what would be nice? If we could leave, like, a marker... I don't know if we can do that, though. Like, I want to be able to... Oh, hang on. Oh, wait a minute. Nice. I think this beacon is still here, actually. And then you can turn it off or on. Oh, nice. Hang on. Ah, oh, cool. It's still there. For some reason, I thought the beacon would just go away once you went there. Cool. So now I'll always know where that area is. I'm assuming that's the game being like, this is an important area, so we'll obviously keep track of it. And then when you're done with it, you can turn it off. I think this is this is pretty good. I'm enjoying myself. I think this is a great little great little ride. It's cool. I'm not as scared as I thought that I would be with how everybody was like a scary underwater experience. And I I like I said I'm I'm also terrified of the deep sea, but maybe there's like just a mass, massive disconnect for me because it's like so alien, you know what I mean? But also it's early days, who knows? We haven't encountered any Leviathan class predators that are not herbivores yet, so there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> but we're gonna go and craft some stuff. Actually, maybe what I should do. Oh, is <laughs> while we're here, <laughs> I'll just <laughs> Hey! -ya! Nice, that was funny. Uh while we're here. Oh, my inventory's full. 
looks right below me, and I have exactly what I need. Uh, let me throw away a fish. Hey -ya. Oh, hang on, I need... Alright, sorry, Metal Salvage. I need Creep Vine. More than you. Alright, we get our Creep Vine, then we can make Fiber Mesh. Uh, we've already got lead, I believe it's in storage. Then we can make the radiation radio radiation suit. I believe we should be able to make the fins. And I think we should be able to make the oxygen tank already. And then we'll be a little bit better equipped to go back out to that life pod. I think this has been a decent first run. Don't you? We, I think we've, uh, we're handling being stranded on an alien planet quite well. I thought we were going to die at one point because I was like, well, we haven't fixed, fixed the reactor in time, so we are going to die. <laughs> I thought we were about to have to start again and just be more efficient, so it was cool that that was, uh, that was not the case. Very nice. Okay, uh, I think I put the stuff in the outside pod. Is here. Yeah, so I need this lead. Alright, let's just swap some stuff over for a bit. Just temporarily, just swap some stuff over. Give me the lead. Need the glass and the titanium. Take this stuff temporarily, please. Okay. All right, let's make us a make a D fiber mesh. Perfect. Now let's make radiation suit. Wow. I have fancy pants in your suit. Am I wearing it automatically? I think so. Yes. Cool. Oh, nice. Radiation helmet and radiation gloves and radiation suit. How about, how about that? I can get that out of my thing there. Perfect. Um, we can now... I swear I had silicon rubber. Hmm, I swear I had it. I must have already used it, but... Good news, everyone. It's not that hard to make, I don't think. Which means I need to remember how to make it. Um, oh yeah, the creep vine seed clusters. Cool. Which is in here. I think it's two to make one though, isn't it? Nope, it's one to make. I can make four. Never mind. Nice. See, I, I got everything there. I got I know what I'm doing. Uh, silicon rubber. Wow. Uh, some titanium. Am I crazy? I swear I also had... Uh, I swear I had some silver ore as well. Maybe I'm crazy. Let's build these fins. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. Okay. A standard oxygen tank. All right, let's find ourselves. Let us find ourselves what we need here. So I need glass, uh, which is quartz, all right? And I have quartz right here, would you believe it or not? All right, so I have all the materials. That's why I was like, I swear I have these. I just have the materials necessary to make it. And then silver ore. I don't think that's in here. I am almost certain that I had some. Almost certain that I had some, actually. So 
it's either I've picked it up and put it down somewhere at some point, or I'm crazy. And I might just be crazy, so I would not be surprised. I don't know if it can be made. I think it has to be found. All right, let's put this away for now. What is in this again? Do I have silver ore in here? Ah, aha! I knew I had silver ore. Should have should have picked that up before. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Look at that. High capacity tank. Upgrades. Look at that. Two tanks. Ooh, you can do a rebreather now. Conserves oxygen when diving deeper, absorbs and recycles CO2 into breathe wet. Dude, I already have a wiring kit. Oh, this is okay. Look at us go. Um, let's go get some more creep find samples. Look at this! I don't even need that right now. Um, I've already up, I've already unlocked the next the next level, dude. All right, let's go get some creep vines. This is highly satisfying. I'm loving this. I'm I am gonna have to make another um, glider soon though. It is at half power. And like I said, I'm not sure if there is a whole... I'm not sure if there's a charging deal. I don't think that's a thing. It would make sense that you just need to make more because there will always be things to make in the game um, of which you need battery, lubricant, copper wire. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I am adapting to my harsh environment. And I will become the apex predator of this ocean. I love that I just made the wiring kick, so I was like, we'll probably need that at some point. <laughs> yeah. And then I sat it in my inventory, and there it is. Give me a rebreather. Cool. Um, wonderful. Now, does the rebreather replace the need for the high capacity tank? I wonder. Or is it all sort of like, does it all stack? Um, so instead of the radiation helmet, I now have a rebreather. Oh, hang on. Yes, you want both. Nice. Okay. Cool. Good line. Oh, okay. That is much higher capacity, and now I have a rebreather. So we are going on deep sea adventures, whether you like it or not. Do you reckon if you like, if I was to store this, would it charge? You know, that's my question now. Should we try that? Like, if you can store that, will it charge? This is how, like, this, I guess this is just, we're just testing things to see if it works. Hmm. I want to, I want to, I want to just kind of say it feels unlikely. You know? All right. Let's drink some water because we thirsty. Exploring the ocean is thirsty work. I just find it hilarious that you craft storage and I just chuck it outside. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I need more storage. Just, just put it in the box outside. Like it doesn't even, it doesn't even float on the ocean. You, we get thirsty way more than anything else. It looks like so. Water is kind of the big old substance that you need. Um, wonderful. It is 
with a very full and happy heart that I am going to say that we're going to bring this episode of Subnautica to to a close. Episode episode one there um, has been quite successful, I think. Uh, this is really enjoyable. I am enjoying just finding stuff, putting it together, building cool things, and then we get to just like further our exploration. Um, which is, which is really cool. I'm just going to quickly check this scanner room thing though, that we found, cause we found a fragment for that. It's an advanced habitat module that can transform a small outpost into a burgeoning science and exploration station Has a 3d display in the center of the room system can scan for and pinpoint particular materials, remotely controlled drones scan the area for up to 500 meters in range. Wall-mounted camera feeds allow for live control of scouting drones and upgrade console may be used to enhance the module's functions. That looks fun. We've got a lot to explore around that sort of uh, LifePod 17 for sure. There's some crash stuff for us to check out. So we'll see what we can find uh, next time. So thank you so much for joining me for this first episode of Subnautica. This has been really, really fun. Just sort of like taking it in and seeing how seeing how it goes i obviously didn't really know what to expect going into this one outside of the fact that it's like some sort of survival ocean thing and it's scary and uh there we go we've we've uh, successfully had our first episode of subnautica so i hope you've enjoyed our start to this playthrough i'm very much looking forward to seeing how the rest of this can go and what will happen uh what will happen next time so thank you so much for tuning in if you're new to the channel uh, please do consider subscribing. It would mean a lot and it would help out uh, my channel tremendously. And of course, I would love to have you as part of the community. We have many, many playthroughs here of, um, of games that I have quickly fallen in love with. And I am looking forward to the rest of this one as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.